everybody you trust and surprise ride outside. We're actually getting an unseasonably warm week here in Missoula, Montana. Usually this time of year, there's probably snow on the ground. It's already regularly in the 30s and 20s, but the next couple days, we're actually creeping up into the upper 40s, low 50s even. Great for riding, but generally a little disconcerting. <laughs> as much as I love this weather for riding, it just means if we don't get enough snow, precipitation, then we're gonna get another really smoky uh, fire season. So today I'm on the Crust Bambora. I uh, added a couple little mods to it. I put on some Velo Orange fenders. I haven't had a full fendered bike in a while, but my last couple rides are just not enjoying the wet, soggy, cold ass. You know what I mean? So I bit the bullet and went full metal fender. And I gotta say, installation was not as bad as I thought it would be. In fact, I would go so far as to say that it was actually a little easier than the plastic SKS fenders I usually use. Mostly because I really struggle with the uh, with the stay tips on the SKS fenders. I find them really fidgety to use, uh, but the way that the stays are on this one, they're near the dropout and you just cut them and there's not a whole lot of drama. Another reason to run fenders is to also keep your drivetrain super clean. I think with the fenders and the wax chain, that's kind of the best combo so you don't get a lot of road grime on your drivetrain. And again, it's not about being a neat freak. It's just the grime turns into basically a grinding paste and slowly eats away at your chain, your chain ring, your cassette, all the really expensive bits that are essential to riding a bike and really hard to find right now. Okay, so another thing I'm testing out and I know you guys are gonna think I'm crazy is the Gilles Bertaud cycling handlebar mirror. These have got to be the most expensive cycling mirror on the planet. <laughs> they cost about 80 to 90 bucks depending on whether you get the leather trim. I got the one with the regular trim just because I didn't feel like spending the extra $10, but I wanted to see what the hype was about. And I gotta say, they've gotta be probably the nicest machined cycling mirror I've ever used. I'm probably gonna do a more in-depth video on it, but everything from the installation and adjustment the tolerances are super tight. And you know, I'm riding on a on some bumpy grav grav and the mirror has not budged. The viewing circle is a little bit small, but the but whatever magnification it is is actually pretty good. That's probably my only complaint is that it does take some time kind of zeroing in the mirror exactly uh, so you can see the traffic behind you. But once you have it set up, it works pretty well. More on the mirror a little bit later. Just wrapped up that flat portion of uh, gravel and so far both the mirror and the fenders are doing pretty good. Fenders, not rattly, mirror hasn't budged. <coughs> oh. Thought we'd stop and admire the view for a second. Mountains aren't bad either. I will say one downside of the mirror, if you do any kind of drive train shot, that mirror is gonna be at risk of getting knocked out of place. So for you grammars out there, beware. Okay, so short little road stretch. Road riding in Montana is not my favorite. People drive so fast and some of the roads are just kind of skinny and narrow. That's why you guys usually see us riding the gravel. So far, I'm looking down at the mirror and uh, lets me really see a car from quite a distance. I mean, the mirror is small, but you do get enough detail to see if they're kind of moving to avoid you, which is nice. Okay, now we're on the slow, climby pavement bit. Uh, the mirror worked pretty well. It's probably the smallest I'd want to go in the mirror, but if you get it dialed, I mean, you can see at least maybe 200 feet behind you. You can tell if the car is moving over at all. I probably wouldn't want to use a mirror any smaller than this, but for its size, pretty dang good. I'm gonna spare you guys the labored, heavy breathing at the climb and just meet you at the top. Okay, we're done with the cave climbing. 
Now to hit the grab grab once again. Oops, a little tight. Last time Laura and I were here, uh, we saw a bear like kind of scamper into the woods and it actually did like a fake lunge towards some hikers that had a dog. So this part, always careful about bears. And I know a lot of you probably think I'm super paranoid, which I am. <laughs> but we recently set up some uh, outdoor cams just because we kept hearing uh, animal noises outside our bedroom window. And we've actually spotted uh, this one bear pass through the last couple nights. And it's a kind of a chonky guy. You'd think by now they'd be hibernating. I mean, it is kind of late November, early December. Um, but again, kind of unseasonably warm. So the bears are still active. Just rolled through some mud puddles and there is something satisfying about not having to worry about getting a wet butt. <laughs> Puttering along, no bears here. <laughs> All right, last little chonky climb, and then time for the chonky downhill. Chonk, chonk, chonk. Downhill will be a real test of the mirror and the fenders. Okay, so the rear has started making some noise and that's because I actually lowered the saddle down a little bit. And what's happening is, you know, I'm using the Erlen rack, which is a bag support and it works pretty well. But when I hit a bump, it's kind of bouncing a little bit, hitting the top of the fender. So definitely something to keep in mind with a system like this. You know, this wouldn't happen with a rigid rack that was supported from the bottom, but with support racks like the Erlen or Paradise Bagman. You do have to account for the flex of the system uh, to make sure that the bag clears either the top of the tire or in this case, the fender. But overall, pleased with it. I think I'm gonna raise the saddle on the descent, kind of like a reverse dropper in this, this situation. But front fender, no problem. It's been a real treat to ride through mud puddles and, and not even care. Let's look at the drivetrain. This is the wax drivetrain, riding through muddy terrain. And look at that. I mean, a little bit of dark stuff. This is actually probably the, the tungsten disulfide from the wax, but no mud, which is remarkable. Granted, not raining, probably would get a little bit sloppier, but still surprised at how clean it is. Okay, I'm gonna raise the saddle, do the descent, and then uh, wrap it up probably in the shop and give you guys a closer look at the mirror and my final thoughts about the fender and some notes about installation. I should mention one more thing. This is our pathless pedal uh, test loop here. And it's basically a ride up to Jumbo Saddle, one of my favorite local rides in the area. Close to downtown, varied terrain, can bang it out in an hour, or you can make it longer by connecting to single track. And you get views like this. So pretty amazing for a local ride. I bring this up because Laura and I are toying around with the idea of coming up with some kind of guide, gravel routes that we like in town and food we like to eat. We'll probably do it as a digital download, maybe a printable, but let me know what you guys think. Would you, is that something that you guys are interested in? Something you'd be willing to pay for? We are probably gonna sell it uh, because the channel does have to create money. <laughs> let me know what you'd want to see in a gravel guide to Missoula. Okay, back to the writing. <laughs> Right, so I managed to actually run over some good muddy puddles that time. Let's see what the chain looks like. Still surprisingly clean. I mean, top and bottom, check that out. Nice. <clears throat> so th this last stretch was really chonky. Uh, I did hear the back touch the tire maybe twice, but otherwise these fenders have been surprisingly quiet. Been kind of hesitant to try metal fenders because in my head they, 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 they would be rattly, but uh, these ones so far pretty good. Raising the saddle did help 
no longer slapping the top of the saddle. Let's head home and wrap it up. Okay, just got back from the ride. Bikes up on the stand. How did everything do? These are the 650B fenders by Velo Orange. They're kind of the wavy pattern here. And I chose these specifically because they've got a smooth one, which I feel like would attract dings way too easily. So I like that this pattern kind of hides those imperfections uh, right off the bat. Again, like I mentioned, uh, when I was riding, mostly no rattle, except for uh, when I lowered my saddle, the Erlen rack was flexing enough to hit the top of uh, the, the fender here. So that is something to keep note. On the front here, I did want to point out a couple things. First off, I added this piece, which is actually a quick release for the front fender. This is by PDW. The Velo Orange fenders didn't come with the stock. If you're gonna be riding off road with lots of rocks and sticks, this might be some cheap insurance. And the idea is uh, if you hit something, instead of the bike throwing you over the handlebars, these will pop out and release. SKS fenders have this built in, but this is something you have to add to most metal fenders. Another thing you'll have to do, especially if you have disc brakes, especially Paul's, because they are so chonky, is you'll need some kind of spacer here and long bolt to push the stay out so it can get around the disc brake. I tried for a couple minutes to, to bend the stay around, but I think this is just a, a much better solution. Let's talk about this guy, the most expensive cycling mirror in the world. Again, this is the Gilles Bertude uh, handlebar mirror. This is how I had it set up while riding. It gave me a good view of cars behind me. The thing is actually really beautiful. It's this, it's this nicely machined aluminum. Uh, I'm gonna move it now. You can see that you can kind of reposition it with your hand. This rubber gasket makes it really easy to hold on to because it has some uh, resistance. What's really cool is you guys saw the bumpy road. This mirror did not budge whatsoever. I have tried cheaper plastic mirrors that have a similar style and usually they're really jittery and the image is almost unusable, nauseating. This is rock solid, didn't budge a bit. So let's look at it a little bit closer. Uh, on this side, you'll see there is a grub screw. And I think this is what's used to tension the mirror on the ball head. So this is what allows it to articulate or not articulate. You can totally tighten this down so you can really adjust the friction to your liking. When the grub screw is loosened, it's pretty floopy floppy. Let's pop it off here. And this is a mirror, uh, kind of very little distortion. I've tried cheaper mirrors where it makes objects look further than they appear and it makes cars really, really tiny. This, however, I think gives you a, a good kind of accurate field of view. Again, just beautifully machined. There's another uh, bolt head here. You can't see quite from that camera angle, uh, but it takes a three millimeter hex wrench. And this is uh, what controls the expander plug. So you can see it's kind of multiple parts. So undo that and then voila, you've got this thing. So this is, uh, this is a part that you stick in your handlebar. There's this rubber piece that expands as you draw this closer to it. One, one pro tip when installing this is before you uh, put it in there and start tightening it down, it does help to kind of, I don't wanna say preload, but get it started so that there's already a little bit of friction when you put it in there. Otherwise, as you turn it, it'll just keep spinning around and around and around and you'll be wondering what the heck you just spent your, your 90 bucks on. So again, uh, I would, you know, hold it in your hand, kind of get the expander plug going. When you get a little bit of resistance, that's when you know when you want to put it in. And then with that, uh, kind of finish it off. And then you take the mirror piece. Uh, you'll notice that there is a slot here. This allows for a little bit more articulation. Uh, you pop that thing on, and then this is a two mil hex, which you then use to kind of tighten down the grub screw. And I like to get it at, uh, I found that it works well to get it at a decent tension where you can still kind of manipulate it with your, with your hand, because that is something you want to do when you first set it up. For me, I like to angle it so I just see the far left edge of my saddlebag, and that gives me a frame of reference of where the cars are. That is the Gilles Bertude mirror. It is definitely better than those $15, $20 cheap plastic cycling mirrors uh, that do something similar. Is it worth that $70 price difference? 
uh, that's going to be up to you. So for me, typically I've used the take a look mirrors that clip onto the, the arm of my glasses. But what I found is after about a year and a half to two, to two years, it actually puts enough weight where, where it bends the screw in the glasses. It actually ends up breaking my glasses and the glasses, you know, they're not cheap. So I've been looking for a better solution than something that sticks onto my glasses. I have tried helmet mounted mirrors, but not really happy with how they adhere. Usually they stay on for a bit and then they fall off or you can't quite put it where you want. This was an intriguing option, definitely expensive, but I think, I think it works. I do think it's the smallest mirror that I would probably want to run here. I, I, I sort of wish that they came with a Touriste model, which uh, was a little bit wider, maybe rectangular, but still had the same nice tight fitting machine parts. What one can dream, please Gilbertude, make that happen. So I'm pretty pleased with how you know, the fenders and the mirror worked on this bike. Uh, so I'm hoping you guys are having an awesome holiday season. If you're looking for some bikey gifts, definitely check out our gift shop. We've got our party pay stems, some stickers, all that good stuff. They make for really unique uh, bikey gifts, uh, especially if the person is a fan of the channel, they'll be super stoked. I do hand sign all the prints. It helps out the channel a ton. As always, everybody keep the supple side down.